Good morning, folks. Today we've got space weather to hear about at both Earth and Sun. We're going to take a step back in time, and we are going to diagnose one of the world's newest electrical mysteries. But first, we've got a sun diving comet. It has already expired as approach to the sun broke the tiny rock apart. Pretty to look at, though, and appears to be a member of the Kreutz comet family. Thus far, no surface perturbations on our star. Let's come to spaceweathernews.com and check out the last day on our sun. Still calm, but still got those massive plasma filaments now really turning into face Earth. It's eyes on them all day, and after that it will shift to the incoming structure, assuming he's able to hold on for that long. Of course, the plasma filaments and coronal holes take the top alerts because solar flaring succumbs to the Earth-facing quiet effect quite quickly now. Large umbras on the sunspots, no magnetic mixing though, and very little energetic potential for solar flares. Back at Earth, however, solar shock waves stream past anyway. The departing coronal hole up north hit Earth with its solar wind stream as expected, just seeing density begin to drop out and the speedy particles arrive in yellow, but there's not yet been major global magnetic disruptions from it, just the sensitive flux beginning to show the extra energy. Eyes on that today. By the way, we can see the next coronal hole, just left of center, dark. That's the return of the negative coronal hole IMF and SPF. So, geomagnetism, tropical storms, and earthquakes are about to end their long days of hiatus from major activity. Things could really wake back up here as the strong coronal hole returns. Let's go back in time here. This is July of 2012, and... When it happened, we warned you guys that it would have been a major one if it had come our way. You heard the same thing out of the experts exactly two years later in the summer of 2014, looking back at the event, and the mainstream analysis continues still. The shockwave and earth disruption from that event would have been quite bad for high latitudes, but would have also been significant, potentially, at equatorial latitudes due to the electrojet there. We are lucky indeed that that one missed us. Well, let's come back to now. Bart, anyone want to guess about space weather conditions on March 16th when the problems began? Global geomagnetic storms abounded, but with localized disruptions as high as K8. That is the second highest storm level that exists. So folks, we saw New Zealand shut down its airspace in numerous transformer, electrical fire, and grid issues middle of last year's major storms. More happened in August when they shut down the U.S. East Coast flight systems as well as more electrical disruptions persisting for days. Sweden shut down its airspace on November 4th due to solar storms making three for three. And this past month, it's been nuclear plants, transformers, electrical fires, and BART all making news as the sun storms take hold of our planet. It's like clockwork. More on those previous events found in the first video under Observing the Frontier over at SuspiciousObservers.org. And of course, we had a new podcast in our Fly on the Wall series come out yesterday as well. Lots to catch up on and lots to consider. Severe storms returning to the U.S. tonight near the Appalachian foothills. Got pressure and radar forecasts across the pond and down under. Earth spots and some current conditions followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.